Welcome to the 43rd Ryder Cup here at Whistling Straits. We are with Xander Schauffele. Uh Xander, um, curious, uh, you know, obviously the lump sum of the year you're playing is Xander. Um, one week a year you're playing in, a, in the team dynamic. Are the highs of a, in a team dynamic any higher than you experience individually? And, and likewise, are the lows any lower uh, when you're dealing with a disappointing match result or something like that? I mean, I'm still playing as Xander, I think. Just true. Under the under Team USA. Right. And so to answer your question, I feel it's, um, you know, there's obviously pressure to play well. And um, I think as a team, we share that. And, you know, if, if you're just from previous experience from a President's Cup that I've played in, um, you know, a loss is heavy and you just want to do well for your teammates. But I feel that um, you can almost be uplifted by your teammates as well. So. You know, I, I think it's sort of whatever you make of it, but it is nice to have teammates. Um, we always, you know, all, all the guys on my team are enemies most of the year, but for this one week, we all share our thoughts and we're all pulling for each other and we, and we want the best for each other because we all want to win. So um, we're, we stand under one flag and, and, and for one cause. So let's try and win this thing. I like it. Okay, let's hit some questions. I guess we'll go to Adam here on four. Andrew, do you feel like a rookie? Um, no, not really. I mean, I, I am a rookie. Uh, it's my first appearance. And, um, you know, I'd say I know that, I mean, knowing most of the guys on the team, knowing pretty much all the captains on the team helps me feel more comfortable. Um, I've never played this property, but having, you know, some of, you know, most of our team, you know, competed in that major championship not too long ago. So they share, they, they share their thoughts, and that makes me feel more comfortable. So, Overall, you know, I am one, but I don't really feel like one. Okay. And uh, pairings are now, we don't know who you're going to be with, et cetera, et cetera. But let's just say you might be paired with Pat. And I'm just curious, how much did that flight going to the President's Cup, those 20-plus hours that you guys were playing cards, have to do with the bond that you've created? Um, not much, actually. Uh, we didn't talk a whole lot while we were playing gin. So... Uh, we spent a lot of time together doing that, but we were pretty much drinking coffee just to stay awake and, and, and playing because, you know, we, we both didn't want to lose. So it was more of a competitive thing, just like us playing. But, uh, yeah, we've, we've become close. We just took a trip to Napa together uh, with our significant others, and uh, it, was, it was a nice time to sort of kick back and relax. Obviously, we're there celebrating, um, you know, his, his uh, FedEx Cup win and my gold medal from a long time ago. So it was, it was nice to sort of share that moment together. All right, let's go to Juan, right in the front right, uh, number one. So, Sander, it looks like everybody in the American team is talking about ping pong. No, but I mean, there has to be, I mean, I, I know you are kind of a decent player, but there has to be other things that bind you together, no? that, that makes you enjoy being together this week and playing together. Can you talk a little bit more about those other things? And you can talk about ping pong if you want to. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's just we do we do dinners. I mean, I'm sure there's there's a lot of functions is what I'm learning to, uh, to a Ryder Cup. And so, um, you know, last night we, we spent time in a barn together, which was a cool setting. And um, there's there's you know small talks or sort of talks that we're not really used to having uh, at normal tournaments. Since you know we normally have our own teams with us, and uh, once I see those guys at the course, we kind of disperse and go back to our own teams at our own homes type deals. So. It's cool to sort of, you know, get to talk to each individual it's just about anything, you know, non-golf related and um, spend some time at dinner. You know, that's sort of how I grew up. Uh, dinners were a time to sort of get to know someone and, and uh, kind of chat. So it's nice to talk to them, see, see you know, what, what they like to get up to. And, you know, they can't hide when their significant other's next to them, uh, fact-checking them. So it's nice to get to know everyone a little bit better. We're going to go to Rex on three. Dinner in a barn? Was it a restaurant in a barn? And you guys just... Uh, I don't know. You know, I figured we're in Wisconsin, so it seemed very fitting. But yeah, it was, it was a nice dinner. It was a nice setting. Um, it was, I think it was maybe a catering type thing, but it was, it, was, it was very enjoyable. My real question was, uh, Steve has talked about trying to be over-prepared this week without getting, giving away any secrets. Can you give an example of, in your mind, there hasn't been a stone unturned? I mean, do you feel like you're getting more than enough information? Yeah. There's, you know, we have our scouts, um... Uh, I'm sure everyone has their scouts. They do certain things. It's a very, you know, general, generalized uh, uh, name to give them, and they provide certain information, and they kind of 
check off any box that maybe the captains, you know, didn't even think of or didn't check off. So, um, and they sort of go back and forth checking to see if, if, you know, what they think is right and what they think is wrong and, and things like that. So I feel, I feel that, you know, they, they feel very comfortable in their picks and, and how they're arranging everything. And, um, you know, we came out uh, early, uh, you know, about a week ago to sort of get comfortable. And I think, you know, that did help me sort of not feel like a rookie. You know, I th when I think of rookie, I think of my rookie year and I feel I show up to properties and I was texting, you know, certain guys I knew on tour, you know, where's registration and where's the locker room and, and things like that. So small things like that make you feel very comfortable. It, it works for me. You know, it was nice to know where the first tee was. It was nice to know where to go. It was nice to know where our locker room and um, where our sort of team cubby was. So, um, you know, I feel like in that sense, it, it made me feel good, you know, arriving on property. Uh, number eight, Bob. Uh, Xander, I, I take it the first time you would have ever played uh, alternate shot with Patrick was in Melbourne. Um, can you talk about how long it might have taken just to get used to that format? How, when you started feeling comfortable, and and obviously you had some success with it there. Yeah, it obviously uh, it's it's just more equipment wise. You know, you have to switch the golf ball. Um, I kind of just go his way. <laughs> Uh, his our balls are actually pretty similar now, which is nice. So, but I think we'll, he's been playing the same ball since uh, I think the Presidents Cup, and um, it, it didn't take that long. I think we sort of became, you know, very comfortable with each other and, and, and sort of friendly, and that sort of helped. We're very we're you know very transparent. I think if I hit a bad shot or he hits a bad shot, we don't really we don't really care. You know, we we both know that we're trying our hardest. I mean, I think. It, we were so tired when we went into our third match, I think, or it was an afternoon match, and uh, basically that afternoon match solidified us playing all five uh, at the President's Cup. And I remember him coming up to me on the first tee, and he, he, you know, he had a coffee in his hand or something, which is something we don't do. So it showed how tired he was, and he just said, "Hey, if I don't talk to you, it's not because I'm not pulling for you. I'm just trying to conserve some energy, and I'll walk ahead and and things like that." And I was like, "That's great. Like that doesn't bother me whatsoever." So we just understand each other very well, and I think that sort of helps us play well together because we just, even if we're quiet or, or you know, whatever you want to call it, not talking, we just know that we have each other's back. Is the golf ball something that could really be a big issue if they were, if if it was widely different? Something that you'd have to you know spend a lot of time overcoming. Yeah, some guys are high spin guys, some guys are low spin guys, and typically you either alter your equipment. Uh, meaning your clubs or I guess including your golf ball so you either go one direction with how you want to sort of combat what kind of player you are so if you have two guys that are you know on the opposite sides of the spectrum you can get kind of a mess especially when the breeze picks up out here let's go to number six yeah, good morning Xander how European do you feel and who's your father supporting this week <laughs> um, you're that guy, huh? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. Yeah, I am, I, I guess I st almost stand alone in my family. My brother was born in Stuttgart. My dad was born in Stuttgart. My mom was born in Taiwan and grew up in Japan. So, I mean, as international, as I like to say. Um, but, yeah, I think I was, you know, I'm the only natural-born citizen in my family. So, you know, I, I can say I'm proud to be an American. I was the only one born in the U.S., uh, so for that reason, you know, I feel very American. I just feel like I've been exposed to a lot of other cultures, so I understand them very well. Um, I think my dad's just rooting for for me. I don't, I don't, I don't think you'll catch him saying he's rooting for Europe at any point. But um, let me know if he does. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we're going to go to 19, Jeff, over here on your left. Xander's the gold medal in the t in the team room this week, and. Uh, since bringing it home stateside here, what, what's been the most meaningful moment you've had with her, the, the most meaningful scene? Um, it's not. This is, you know, it's too individual. Um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's about the team this week, so there's, I wasn't going to make an appearance, but I don't even know where it is. I think my mom, my mom may have it back at home, um, unless my dad secretly has it on him out here, but... Um, <laughs> I think the like, the coolest moment for me, in all honesty, was was back in Japan. I uh, I was able to share it, share the gold medal with my grandparents. Um, they someone snuck them into the hotel, and they happened to be next door to me in the hotel, so I happened to see them, which seemed completely legal in Japan. And um, it was cool to see them. It was uh, just seeing their reaction. It's, it's hard to surprise someone that's 80 80 plus years old and um, 
just to see the joy on their faces. Obviously, they're happy to see me. It's been some time, and uh, that was probably my, my favorite moment uh, of sharing it with, an, with, with anyone. Right, we're going to go to number five over here, uh, back so Colin, what are, what are your impressions of the course then, having been here a couple of weeks ago and then just getting around a bit yesterday? Um, yeah, it, it, uh, it kind of has a, uh, a um, what was it called, uh, the course we played? I didn't play very well at it. Kiowa, Kiowa feel-ish to me uh, off the tee. A lot of blind spots where you're kind of aiming at a gorse bush or aiming kind of left center of a bunker. Um, overall, I mean, I, since I've been here, I've played really well. In, in, in practice, so I'm already a fan. Um, you know, it, it's 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 depending on the wind. Obviously, the course is named Whistling Straits for a reason. So we haven't really played it. in, I think my first round we played on Monday, a week ago. It was kind of breezy for five or six holes and off the coast, and that was pretty intense. Uh, but so far, you know, I think today will be a really good test. It's going to be 62 degrees high and blowing. So I'm, I'm excited to go out and sort of get some practice in today to get a different different condition. But if the wind lays down, it's, it's very scorable. 21, Doug. Xander, from your, say, high school and, and college days and what have you, where was, where was the Ryder Cup on your, on your must-watch TV uh, programming? And was there any part of you uh, that, that ever wondered why the Americans didn't win as much as you th maybe thought they should have? Um... Yeah, I'm not sure. I going back then, no, it was not. I kind of watched golf to fall asleep on a Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. So I'd watch football. You know, I'd practice in the morning with my dad, and then I'd watch football at one o'clock, Chargers game, 105 on CBS, and then you know my dad would turn golf on, and then I'd fall asleep, and I'd wake up for the Sunday night football game. So that was kind of my childhood. <laughs> not that I didn't love golf, but I just I really. That was sort of the program. I think everyone kind of, you know, once you hear Jim Nance's voice, you kind of just, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of nice. So, um, but, uh, yeah, the Ryder Cup, uh, I, I've seen highlights. I honestly haven't really seen, you know, as a kid, I just like any other kid, you see Tiger in red, and he wasn't wearing red at Ryder Cups unless, you know, that was one of the team outfits. So those were kind of the things I dreamt of as a kid. And in terms of Ryder Cups, only until, you know, when I was in college, it was, I, was, I was probably very aware of it. It was sort of, you know, major championships, players, Ryder Cup, and then I learned about the President's Cup shortly after. So those are kind of the order of how, you know, my dreams were stacked up. We are joined by Patrick Cantley. Uh, Patrick, uh, welcome to what is your first Ryder Cup. Um, amazingly consistent year, especially the back half of it, actually whole thing but uh, I think we've got 15 straight rounds in the 60s what's been the key ingredient for you to, to, to have this consistency and be at peak form or, or really near peak form for so long yeah I think I've played well um, I've played really well this summer and um, you know I think it's weird because my prep and my process have been pretty similar all year but the results really have started to show the last little stretch and uh, <laughs> being here today that's a good stretch to play some of the best golf of the year um, that being said this week is a totally different week than an individual tournament and um, I'm really excited to get that get that going because it's uh, I'm sure it will be an experience unlike any other and the only thing close I've had is President's Cup and Walker Cup okay. sit the floor for some questions for Patrick Start over with Doug. Given it's, given it's a different week, which which we all know, how does that how does that become different for you as a as a golfer? As it relates to your game, is what I'm getting. At, I, I guess. Yeah. I think process stays the same. I'm still trying to learn the golf course and prep as best I can, and 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 play the best possible golf I can. But priorities obviously are different. I could go 0 and 4 this week, and if the U.S. team wins, it's a raving success, and I'll be elated. Um, and I could go 4 and 0 this week, and and if the team loses, it will be a bad week. And so that's just so different than, than, than a regular golf week. And that's what makes it so special is that uh, you're playing for something bigger than just yourself. But if I could follow, John, kind of to your point of what you talked about well in the last, in the last month or so mm -hmm. of, of staying in the present, how hard is it to stay in the present when you've got all this stuff going on around you and different matches and momentum and scoreboards and all that stuff? Definitely more difficult, I would say. Um, and, you know, I think in a weird way, almost 
you just have to let yourself experience all that because if I see somebody in a match that's ahead of me or behind me, you know, a guy in front of me make a putt, like I'm, I'm going to be pumped up. It's going to be, it's going to be excited because I have an invested stake in what's going on up there, and it's a uh, something larger than me, and so uh, that's different than most of the golf that I've played my whole life, and so I think. Um, maybe in this this one case, you know, accepting that reality opposed to trying to fight it off is probably more helpful because I won't be able to uh, avoid it. And so embracing that part of this week, I think, uh, I think is great. And I think that's why people are so um, excited to watch this tournament. All right, we're going to shoot over to Wang Gian front. Uh, okay. That's your right. Go so, ahead. Patrick, maybe it's, it's the same thing. No? So, you are a person who has his own philosophy of life, philosophy of golf, very distinctive. So, how do you adapt that to the team experience, I mean, for a whole week? And what parts do you enjoy more and what parts do you don't enjoy that much? No. <laughs> I think bonding with the guys is, is really cool and having them on your side. I think golf misses that so much because we're all individuals and we almost bond with our own like team unit. We'll, we'll travel with our teams. And so that's where that bonding takes place on a regular week. And this week it's, you know, um, I'm having dinner with DJ or Daniel Berger or whatever it would be. And um, having those guys on your side for a common goal lets everybody's guard down a little bit. And so I think they can be more of themselves with less protectiveness, like I don't want you to know what I'm thinking or know my insecurities or whatever it would be. And so this week is great for just seeing those people with their guard down because we see them all the time, but we don't necessarily have a real conversation with them or say, how are you feeling or how's your family or whatever it would be because we're all so busy doing our own things. And um, that's what I noticed in President's Cup. And really, um, you know, one of the best things personally for me about President's Cup, other than the golf, was just being able to be forced to spend time with Xander, and he's become one of my best friends through that experience. If we were at a regular tournament, there's no way I would have spent the time or gone out of my way to invest in a relationship with one of the other guys that I was playing against. But now that he's on my team, and it might help me in my golf to get along with this guy, I realized that I really liked him as a person, and we've become great friends. So um, that would be probably the best thing about weeks like this. So do you feel things get more real in a Ryder Cup and you like that? No? Not sure. Not sure. Um, more real. I think you see what people are like with their guard down so they act more real when they feel like they're in that safe team room environment because a normal week, I imagine, and this is just maybe through my own self-experiences, I'm going to block everyone out except my team. Right? That's a very human thing to do. This week, your team is a much larger unit, and it includes DJ, and it includes Colin Morikawa. But like on a normal week, I'm like blocking those guys out. Don't give them my stuff. And this week, I have my guard down. We're in the team room, and we can all be ourselves because they're part of our team. It's a human thing. And so um, seeing guys like that who I'm, don't have a lot of experience being with on a real level, they're more real with me because we're all on the same team. Yeah. All right, Jeff on your left, number 19. Patrick, foursomes is a game you're not going to play a lot as an American, I wouldn't think. Uh, how, do much, you... how much foursomes do you play? <laughs> <laughs> once. Played it once. Right, okay. Uh, just wondering what you find the most challenging of the format and where you and Xander went 2-0 and in Australia in that format, what, what worked so well with you two? Uh, I was talking about the other night. There's a weird thing about foursomes in that you only hit half the shots. So personally, it feels like every shot you hit is more important because it is. Usually you would hit, be hitting double the shots. So personally, it would feel like you know every shot I hit is two times what it's normally worth for the outcome of that match compared to singles. And so, uh, and best ball in a weird way, it's less. It could be half or it could be even less than half of a singles match. And so I think that pressure or that feeling, um, while I haven't heard it expressed in that way, 
is a real thing that people feel, which makes them feel uncomfortable in foursomes. Um, I think getting, I mean, you saw it with Seve and uh, Olathebel. I mean, I guarantee you they didn't say sorry for hitting a bad shot, right? Because they're such good friends and, and they had done it so many times. So I think foursomes is a lot more emotional in that way. And, and the fact that, you know, Xander and I are, are, are really good friends. And so I know he's trying as hard as he possibly can. And if he hits a bad shot, it's just, that's golf. Um, and so because it's so much more emotional, I think, and, and the pressure really is more in that format, it really helps to gel with your partner. Right, we're going to go across the way, Bob, eight. Patrick, when you, uh, when you said earlier about if you went 0-4 and the team won, you'd, be, you'd still be happy. Just, Elated. Um, the fact that you referenced 0-4 and 4-0, and does that mean you're not going to play five times? Or was that just... Um, uh, that's very arbitrary. Uh, I could play zero. I could play one time. I could play five times, whatever Strick wants. And um, I, am, I am here to do the best I can and contribute in the best way possible. But I don't, I don't know what the, what the slated plan is. Did Australia, did Australia take away any of the angst you might have felt if this was the first time you had ever done this in a team setting? Maybe, but I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, Format, you know, the same, it's the same style, obviously. It's a little different, the President's Cup. but I assume it's a very good experience for something like this. Um, but from what I've heard from everybody, the experience this week is – like the President's Cup on steroids, and so I'm expecting that. We're going to go back right number nine. Hi, Patrick. Um, I just wondered if you could tell me um, what it means to you to represent your country. Well, I think that's, uh, that's the whole point, and I think that's one of the best parts of this is that I know, for the most part, whether – if someone's a USA fan, if someone really doesn't like me, they're still rooting for me to win my match. And so that's like one of the best parts about this, this format, this team golf, this event. And um, consequently, someone on the other side of the pond may like me, and they are rooting so hard against me. So it makes, it makes the stakes feel much larger. And I mean, that, playing on the biggest stages in golf is exactly why I've prepped and practiced my whole life and it's one of the great joys I have um, in my life and it's what I look forward to and so when you can get everyone amped up and and make it feel like it really matters I mean that's the best so uh, it's it's an honor to to represent the United States and hopefully we can give all the fans something to cheer for are you a uh, are you a patriotic person for sure I think uh I think, I think there's, there's something really cool about America and about the United States where you could be from anywhere and you could be anyone and there's an underlying feeling of we're still all Americans and we're still all, we may disagree about this, that, or the other, but we're all American and we're all patriots and we all want the best for this country. And so... Being just a small part of that is an honor, and I'm very excited to represent the country because I do have a sense of that, that at the end of the day, I could uh, disagree with someone on almost everything, but we still want what's the best for our country, and I think that's, that's an amazing thing about being, American, being an American. Going straight back here, Alex, 2-3. Yeah. Patrick, um, the, adrenal the adrenaline of someone playing well that's your partner or the adrenaline that you have when you hit a nice shot, are they the same? Sorry, can you ask that again? Yeah. The adrenaline that you feel when, someone, when your partner hits a good shot or does something good versus the adrenaline you have when you hit a good shot, are they the same? Uh, no, but yes. I mean, I feel just as invested or darn near just as invested on Xander's shots in a, in a foursomes match. And I'm just thinking about how I was in President's Cup um, compared to when I'm hitting a shot. And yet, maybe not, just a little less, because I can't control it. And so 
um, but it still feels like my ball that's flying through the air because I know I got to hit it next. And then also on the on the foursome side, do you feel like it's more important if you play with somebody that you know well or is a friend versus someone that's completely out of left field that you didn't even think you'd play with and you don't really know? Yeah, I think it's very helpful to know your partner in that format, especially less so in best ball. Um, but for the comments I made earlier, I think it definitely helps to gel with your partner because it that format feels more emotional. And so when you are playing and you hit a bad shot, you don't want any sense of, oh, I wonder what my playing partner is thinking about the terrible shot I just hit. Because inevitably, someone's going to hit a bad shot. Well, if you're realistic about it, you know that going in, and it's no big deal. I'm going to go to Ron in the front right. How would you describe Steve Stricker's style as a captain? And is there an element of it that stands out or something he's done maybe particularly for you that sort of embodies it? I think he is excellent at being a workman type leader. And so instantly, he's someone that you respect because he's going to put in the work to help prepare the team uh, as best as possible. And really, that's all you can want out of a captain. He's 100% invested, and he's not a raw, raw, big ego guy. And I think that's something that the guys on the team instantly respect in that he knows the most important thing he can do is setting up the 12 guys he has on his team for success. And so um, he, he doesn't make it about him. And you know, to have a leader like that who really wants the best for the team is, is something, like I said, you can, you can respect and admire. And so um, getting to know him a little more through this process has only made me admire and respect him more. And I think he's doing a great job. Two questions. They've got to be quick. We're going to start with Adam. What clicked at the President's Cup with you and Xander? Can you pinpoint when you felt like we're going to be real good friends and a little bit on the celebration in Napa? So I don't think any of us would have, either of us would have gone out of their way to, to be friends with each other. But then spending that time together, we realized that we really got along with each other. I think he's incredibly smart. And I think he's incredibly conscientious. And so he, he is someone that probably brings out the best in me. He's more positive, And he has a way of being more light opposed to me being serious. And yet, he's very quiet and reserved. And so we kind of have that, that bond. Uh, and yet, he balances me out a little bit. And so, um, you know, taking like the trip to Napa was very natural. It was like, you know, I'd really like to spend time with Xander and Maya. And so that's kind of just how that came about. I also feel like with as heavily invested I get into golf and as focused as I get, it's really helpful for me to have things that I look forward to. And so before the stretch of the playoffs where I knew I was going to be playing lots of golf tournaments and be on the road for a number of weeks, I thought, man, I need something to look forward to and asked if he wanted to go to Napa. And he said that sounded great. And we had an uh, unbelievable time. All right, last one here, Doug, 21. Oh, 21. Uh, I would ask you this as a, just as an observer and, and a relatively knowledgeable golfer. Why do you think Europe keeps winning this thing? Uh, so... I've read a few gin books, and um, how would I? Uh, let's see if I can get it. I get it right. Um, if you play enough gin hands, a one or two percent difference in skill translates to almost an assured assured win over many, many, many hands of gin. But you could have a big difference between somebody, maybe a 60 to 40% skill level, level difference. And um, gin is still chancy enough to where you could play 10 hands and lose six or seven of the hands against someone that's much worse than you skill-wise. And so there really, there's only, there's only two of, there's, these matches are only played every two years, and golf is very chancy. And so would it surprise you if the U.S. went on a similar run to what Europe's been on for the next 20 years? wouldn't surprise me. I mean, you go to Vegas and you play roulette and the chances are 50-50, but skewed toward the house a little bit, it could, it could hit red six times in a row, right? And that's, but that's not abnormal. You flip a quarter, it, it would be weird if the quarter flipped tails heads, tails heads, tails heads. Then you'd think something trippy was going on. So um, 
I, uh, I try to take a very long-term view on things like that. Who knows? The captains are different every year. The players are different every year. The venues are different every year. The weather's different every year. You're really going to uh, ask a question like that and think you're going to get the right answer? I don't have the answer to that. This is my first one. With Dustin Johnson. Dustin, welcome to your fifth career Ryder Cup. A uh, little bit different role for you in this team room than, than you may have had in the past. Uh, uh, in all honesty, did you ever see yourself as the, the oldest, the most experienced, and sort of the wise veteran in the room? Um, no, it's, you know, thinking about it, you know, this year, obviously, you know, being the, the oldest by a few years, um, you know, it's kind of a little strange for me just to, you know, I've never been the oldest. I always felt like I was one of the younger guys on the team. So still feel that way. Um, but obviously, yeah, I'm the, I guess, the veteran on the team, really. And so, yeah, it's, it's a role that I enjoy. But, you know, obviously with the guys on the team, you know, all of them are very good players. So don't really have to do much. Gotcha. Okay, let's hit the room for some questions for Dustin. I guess we're going to start over at number seven, back right. Yeah, as the veteran on the team, you've seen a bunch of different team dynamics. This team in particular seems to have kind of a, a youthful fire. What, what's your read on how this team and, and the vibe around it compares to teams that you've played on in the past? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a little different, obviously, with us all being, you know, fairly young. Um, but, you know, we're young, but also we, we still have a lot of experience, I feel like. And uh, so... The dynamic's been great. You know, we all get along really well for the most part. And during a team event, you know, everyone, you know, we all get along and we've had a great time so far. So, you know, it's going to be a great week and, you know, the, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I feel like we've got a really strong team and, you know, it's going to be fun. We're going to have to play well, though, if we want to, you know, if we want to win. But, you know, the I think I feel like the captains and everybody has got to set up in the right, right way to to be successful. Have they been needling you at all for being being the old guy on the team? No, not really. Okay, we're going to go to 24. Dave. Dustin, good morning. Um, you have a, probably as much experience as anybody here on the American team. Um, pivotal holes this week in your mind, uh, other than obviously if a match gets to 18, that's pivotal. But are there other holes that you look at and say we, they could be really pivotal for this week? Um, I mean... I think they're all pivotal. There's not not really necessarily one hole that's going to be pivotal. You know, the golf course is good. I mean, it's you know, depending on the weather, it's you know, it's a tough golf course. Obviously, they've cut the rough down a little bit, which which will help. But um, you know, you still got to play some some good golf. You know, to to make birdies. Um, but so you know, to me, and, and especially in a format like this, you know, every hole is, is pivotal, really. I'd like to see 13 set up drivable. Oh, that doesn't matter. I don't, are they thinking about doing that? Possibly. That's all right. Well, if they do, then, yeah, it's definitely a, you know, one hole where you'd have to think about it because there's, you know, a lot of trouble around the green. So, you know, whether going for it is any advantage or not. Obviously, in you know, in a four ball, yeah, four ball match, um, you know, possibly one guy could go for it, one guy lay up, maybe. Who knows? We're gonna go back left, Chuck, number twenty-two. Yeah, yeah I wonder if you could please remember um, what are your memories of the run-up to your first, your first Ryder Cup, uh, what you were like, what it was like, anything that stands out in memory. Yeah, mine was Wales. It was that was an interesting week, uh, you know. Obviously, the weather didn't cooperate very well. It was, you know, very wet and rainy and cold, but it still was a fun week. And, you know, it was interesting for me, too, because I remember that it was Thursday afternoon. I was on the range with Butch and, you know, just hitting some balls, just kind of winding down um, and cracked my driver. And, of course, all the trucks had just left. So, um, yeah, that was fun. I remember, you know, trying to, you know, ended up waking up Keith, who was back in San Diego. I think it was like, whatever, three or three in the morning there, and he called the guys on the truck and somehow got me a couple heads, you know, a couple hours later. But um, 
you know, so that was an interesting curveball that I got from my first Ryder Cup. But I, I still remember it was, you know, it was so much fun. It was a great week. And obviously, you know, the anticipation of the of the first match um, obviously didn't go quite as well as we would have liked to. But it still was a lot of fun, you know, great memories and, and very enjoyable. Doug, 21. Without, without getting into gin or roulette, um, <laughs> what would be if someone were to ask you, uh, given the, the accomplishments of the of the U.S. team over the years, why does Europe keep winning? What would you What would you say? What do you, What do you think they do that allows them to get the results they get? They just play better. It's really simple. You know, whoever plays better is going to win. I mean, it's not it's not rocket science. I think I'm done. Okay, <laughs> shut down. Uh, let's go to number three over on your right. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Dustin, I imagine you know a lot of the U.S. team pretty well, but I was wondering if you've learned anything new about any of your teammates this week uh, or if there are any guys that you haven't spent much time with until now. Um, no, most of the guys I've, yeah, I've spent enough time with or been on teams with. Um, I guess we got you know, Scotty. Scotty's his first team event, um, but he's with the same management company, so I've played some golf with him and you know known him you know since he's got out here. So, but yeah, for the most part, yeah, I know all the guys fairly well. You know, we play a lot together and you know see each other on the road all the time. We're gonna go back right to Derek Eleven. Uh, Justin, uh, the last few Ryder Cups you've played in, we've seen the courses tweaked to suit the home team to considerable effect. I just wonder this venue not being a typical PGA Tour venue, whether that takes away some of that advantage, do you think? Um, no, I mean, it's, you know, this golf course, obviously, it's a great golf course. It's, it's difficult. You know, it's had, I played two PGAs here, so I know the course pretty well. But, yeah, it's, it's not a golf course that necessarily suits one team or the other. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good test of golf, and I think it'll be a, you know exciting week, and you know, you're going to see some good golf around here. Going to, we'll get you, uh, number eight. Uh, that's uh, Bob. Dustin, just wondering, uh, 2010, 2012 particularly, were, were very close losses, you know, kind of came down to the end. I'm just wondering if, do, do those compare in any way to any individual loss? Is, are, are those harder or easier to take than, you know, maybe a major you contended in and didn't get or a tournament that you th thought you should have won? Yeah, for some reason I feel like the, the team, you know, like the Ryder Cup, you know, is, is different. Obviously, you're, you know, you're not just representing yourself. You're representing your country, your teammates, you know, captains, friends and family. Um, so it, it means, you know, the feelings are a little bit different, but I feel like it's, yeah, it, not that it hurts or stings more, but yeah, it just, it's a different kind of feeling when you, you lose. I, I don't like it, that's for sure. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely way more enjoyable when you win. We're going to get a one right here in the front, number so, one. So talking about knowing each other in the team, Patrick was talking about this week being a different experience that you get to know each other better, you know, you get to talk about things that you don't know why you don't talk. So how are you living that? Well, he talked, saying about sitting with you and being able to know you better. Also. Yeah, uh, obviously, you know, this week we spent a lot of time just with the team and, you know, especially this year, you know, with, with COVID and all the, all the other stuff, we're, we do a lot of stuff where it's just the team. And so, yeah, we do get to spend, you know, extra time with guys and, you know, talking to him so you get to know him a lot better than you know just playing around the golf or you know seeing him at lunch or something on the, but yeah so it's, it's a nice week and it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy it number six please yeah how, how, why do you play so well here what 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 is it about the course here that suits you and how are you able to take the positives out of your previous performances from here from the PGAs um I don't know I, I like the golf course it's uh you know, like I said, I feel like it's it's tough. You know, it's obviously all dependent on the conditions. You know, if we get some wind and, you know, the course firms up a little bit, this golf course plays really difficult. Um, you know, if the conditions stay fairly soft, then, 
you know, we'll get to attack it a little bit, a little bit more. But you know, you still got to hit quality golf shots and control your golf ball really well because, you know, it seems like there's always a breeze blowing. You know, you got to hit all kinds of different shots. You use kind of every club in your bag. So, um, you know, and, and every shot you're hitting this golf course, it makes you think and makes you really focus on what you're doing. So I, I enjoy that, and you know, I like, I've always liked, you know, tough golf courses. Come back here. Do you have positive memories? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, I've I've played well here. You know, the two times with the major was here. So, um, yeah, I like this golf course. I enjoy playing it, and yeah, I'm looking forward to this week. All right, let's wrap her up here. Number 21. Go. Excited that you do have a memory, by the way. Um, being the being the most veteran guy on the team and having played only four Ryder Cups is that a good thing for the U.S. The fact that you have six rookies and I think nine guys have only played no more than one is that is that good um yeah I mean I, I've I think so I can't I can't really say one way or the other I mean I don't you know we've had the teams I've been on in the past that feel like we've had tons of experience and hasn't worked out so well so maybe this is this is a, a you know kind of a obviously different generation of golfers coming up and you know we've got some really talented players and so um you know young guys that maybe don't have all the memories of of losing all these Ryder Cups so um maybe this is this is the recipe and then secondly what do you see your role as this week um my role is to win as many matches as I can or that I'm, you know, just worry about my match that I'm playing in, help the team in any way that I, I can or, or that they need. And, you know, so that's what I'm going to do. We are here with Colin Morikawa. Colin, welcome to your first Ryder Cup of your career. Um, what does this U.S. team roster, um, of which you're part of, six rookies, eight twenty somethings and you meet both those uh, – those dynamics. What does it say about the present uh, state of American golf and its future? Diversity. You know, I, I think we talk about that um, not just in golf, but around the world right now, especially in the U.S. And um, it shows that there's, you know, golf is meant for a lot of people. It's meant for a lot of different people. And um, anyone that has a chance, they, they can get a chance to make it here. And um, to have six rookies, I, I think that's a lot. Um, but we have six veterans and we have six guys, even though we're a fairly young team. Um, we've got a lot of guys that just have had experience in, in golf in general. Obviously, the Ryder Cup's a whole different kind of beast of itself, but um, I think we're all meant for this stage, and uh, we look forward to it. Good. Good to have you here. Let's uh, hit the floor for some questions for Colin. Uh, let's start number 19, Jeff. Colin, as someone who's watched this from the outside looking in, is it kind of puzzling what the U.S. fortunes have been in this event and, and having all this uh, new phases and fresh blood? Uh, how... how excited are you guys to try and turn that around uh we're really excited um yeah it's <laughs> it is puzzling how how i think we've lost uh you know a lot in the in the handful of years uh looking back at the past but that's the past you know we're, we're here and, and we're, we're about the present we're about you know hopefully what the future is going to be like but um you know it's it's about this week and hopefully we can turn that around and we can kind of turn that tide in our favor um for the you know however many years i'm able to play this but uh, but yeah, you know, what's, what's happened in the past, you know, I, I couldn't have had any control of that, you know, I was whatever years old. And, um, I think as, as time goes on, we learn, you know, you, you learn and you improve and, um, just looking at what, at the way the captains are going this week, you know, I don't know exactly what it was like, just say, you know, 10 years ago, but, um, they're doing everything that I would want to see in a captain. So it's, it's awesome to see, um, and be a part of that team. Okay. Let's go across the way. Number three. Hey, Colin. You're usually uh, pretty stone-faced out on the golf course. I think the most I've seen from you is like a little, a little fist pump. I didn't watch you at the Ryder Cup, but I'm, I'm curious. Do you think that at the Walker Cup, rather? I'm sorry. Do you think that this week we're going to see a little more, maybe a side of you that we haven't really seen on the golf course? Um, yeah, I, I think I think that's what the Ryder Cup brings out of some people. You're still going to, you know, you're not going to see me as uh, energetic as some because um, I want to get the job done. But yeah, there's going to be emotion. Um, but it's about, you know, leveling out that emotion, right? Having that emotion after a made putt or, or a wand hole and then going back to the next tee shot and realizing that that was the last hole. You got to worry about this next hole, kind of this mini match. So 
um, yeah, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty good at balancing that out and uh, hopefully, you know, see, see a lot of fist pumps out there. Let's go straight back, number 23, Alex. Uh, Colin, a lot of guys have come in here and talked about how they have learned things about other guys because they kind of let their hair down, things that you don't usually do at a normal tournament. What have you learned about any of your teammates this week? <laughs> they're, all, they're all amazing guys and they're, they're really smart. Um, I mean, I just chimed in on a, I wasn't even, li I wasn't even talking. I was listening to a conversation with Jordan Bryson last night at our dinner. And, um, the things they're talking about are things that, you know, I'd, I'd never talked about with my friends or other golfers that I, I even play with, um, you know, just say in college, you know, it's, it's crazy the level of, of knowledge these guys have, um, for the game cause they love it so much and they're interested and that's, that's what I love to do. And I just kind of peek my ear, you know, in and, and kind of figure out what they're talking about. Um, but they're just, they, they love it so much. And I think looking at the veterans and, and looking at the ones that have lost a Ryder Cup already, um, they just want to win. You know, it's at the end of the week, you know, it doesn't matter if you've won zero points or if you won five. If your team wins, you know, that's the best feeling in the world. And I think that's the way a lot of guys have to look at it. Um, and that's, you know, how I looked at the, the Walker Cup I played, the Palmer Cups I've played. Um, thankfully, I've been on the right side of those. Um, so hopefully I can just keep it that way. Can, can you just give us the gist of or the topic that Jordan and Bryson <laughs> were talking about? Uh, they were just talking about wedges. <laughs> Not to make us get that excited about wedge discussion. No, trust me, it was, it was a very interesting conversation. <laughs> All right, <laughs> 21. Done. All of that. Uh, just curious, I'm sure as a, as a golf fan, you've got certain television memories growing up of Tiger making the putt at Torrey or, or if, at Torrey. do you have any Ryder Cup highlight television memories burned into your skull? Uh, I wouldn't say burned in. Um, that's me. I think we've gone through this question a bunch of like majors, you know, what's your favorite history on this and that. And to be honest, like it just kind of goes through me. Like I, I, I'd rather be playing like, you know, watching the Ryder Cup. Obviously you watch it every year with your family and friends and whatnot. Um, but to be honest, like I'd, I'd much rather be playing. So I'm, I'm happier to be in this moment, be, be in the stage. Um, so let's, let's make some memories this week. And, and along those lines, you've known you've been on the team longer than, than most guys. And I'm sure you've kind of thought about, uh, what it's going to be like this week. Is anything not surprised you, but has anything, uh, happened this week, golf course, team room, whatever that you weren't expecting? Not really. Um, you know, I, I think some of the times when you're with the entire team, those are the, the best moments. I mean, you know, just riding on a bus yesterday with half the guys, to dinner is like some of the best stories you're ever going to hear. And I think those are the memories that you kind of take with you. Um, you know, did I, you know, all the clothes, all the, the fans, you know, everything, I, you kind of know what you're going to expect. Um, but you just don't know what kind of stories you're going to hear. And those are some of the best things that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. Who, who is the best storyteller? <laughs> and, are, and are you one of them? Uh, no, I'm definitely not one of them. I mean, I'm 24 and I have... <laughs> maybe like a fraction, if not zero, the stories, uh, say, Phil Mickelson has. Um, Phil, obviously, is a, is a great storyteller. I don't know if he's telling the truth at this point. I mean, you know, you get to a certain age, and you kind of just, you, you make stuff up. And uh, I have a hard time believing some of the stuff I heard, but, you know, <laughs> but they it were is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, Chuck, 22. Yeah, a few years ago, I watched your graduation on YouTube. It was just as exciting as most graduation <laughs> ceremonies are. But it wasn't that long ago, like congratulations. But um, Thank you. Or w w as you were coming here, it's, it's really not that long ago, and you've got two majors, and you're already in this as, a, as an obvious choice, of, or, you know, shoe-in candidate, whatever. Um, are you ast were you astounded at all at how far it's come so fast for you? Um, no, I mean... Look, we're, we're, was the Ryder Cup, or, you know, let's talk, talk about the Olympics. I realize we're at the Ryder Cup. The Olympics were not on my radar at all when I graduated. I mean, I thought that was just something that was not attainable, really, unless I had done what I did. And, and I wasn't thinking, like, it wasn't possible. But for me, that first summer was to get my card. How do I get my card, whether it's the Corn Ferry Finals or whether I win or earn enough points, get my card. So there's been, there's been goals that I've set, obviously very high goals, um, but still achievable, and, and there's, there's goals out there that, you know, I, I put to my standard that I think that I can reach that maybe other guys don't, but, you know, that's for me to, to know and for me to believe. 
Um, but knowing that this Ryder Cup was a you know after I won and then you win a major and you play well in 2020, um, yeah, this was obviously a goal. And I think you have to adjust your goals as time goes on. And um, you know maybe the Ryder Cup wasn't on my radar when I graduated, but it soonly you know was on the radar. And that President's Cup that I missed in 19. Um, you know, quickly was on my radar because, you know, I'd put my name out there. I'd played well and um, had to play better. But uh, missing that team, not that, I, you know, I had a great chance to make that team, but just missing that team kind of just pushed me to, that, like, you know, I want to be on these team events. And these team events um, are just so, mem you know, memorable uh, that, you know, you don't really, really want to miss any. When was your first conversation with Steve Stricker about the Ryder Cup team? Do you remember that? Yeah, so we had talked maybe a few weeks before uh, the PGA um, at Harding, and I knew, you know, I, I wanted to play a practice round with him. I had never got to meet him, actually, and um, we scheduled a practice round that week at Harding, and um, obviously he was a good luck charm to kind of fuel a win. Kind of worked, didn't it? Uh, let's go over to Daniel, number three. You've reached that level now where you, ha if you have a couple of so-so tournaments, people are, what, what's going on? Or, you know, is he injured? So how did you process uh, somewhat disappointing FedEx Cup playoffs, and, and how's the, the body and the game feel coming into this week? Yeah, it was just bad timing. Um, you know, the biggest thing I learned from those three weeks was to never play injured. I think I've learned that. That's I'll, I'm never going to do that again, no matter what it is. It's just it built bad habits into my golf swing. Um, by the time the playoffs had started, at Liberty, I thought my back was feeling good, but I just built in some really bad swing patterns. And that's what happens when I play bat or when you play with a, you know, an injury. And um, those three weeks, I was just trying to figure out how do I s hit it better because that's, that's a big part of my game, um, trusting, knowing where the golf ball is going to go. And um, so those three weeks, we're just trying to figure out, you know, how do I hit my cut? How do I hit my cut? How do I aim left, fade it right? And I finally figured it out right after the playoffs. And, uh, you know, obviously some really bad timing, but it's going to happen. You're going to play bad, and that's golf. And, um, you know, it feels good. You know, we were talking, I was talking with Xander yesterday, and he looked at me. He's like, you're back. And I'm like, yes, I'm back. Um, so the cuts, are, the cuts are back, and uh, it's a good time to, to have that shot. Cuts are back. Are you 100% 100, 100 healthy? I'm 100% healthy. I'd knock on wood right now, but I'm, I'm feeling great. Six and then eight. Hi, Colin, can I just ask you to expand on your very first answer you gave you when you talked about diversity in the team and, and what sense you meant that in the, in the sense internally of the team or also in the, the image that this team and gives out to the, to the sport and, and representing your nation? Yeah, uh, let's see. I mean, when you look at us on TV, we're all pretty much the same. We're all just hitting a golf ball, moving it forward, playing 18 holes. Um, but everyone on this team has their own character. And to finally get to know, and I, I know – pretty much everyone on this team, are, and, but to get to know them a little bit better and see their character really pull, pull out of them when you're in the team rooms, when you're hanging out, um, having dinner, that's what's fun. You know, that's when you get to really see what everyone's like and everyone's awesome. You know, it's, a, it's such a good 12-man team that it's just, they're just fun to be around, um, that it just makes the, the week a little different than what you normally see. You know, you're, we're not talking like this and hanging out um, on a regular week. You know, our, our tour events, you go and do your business and get out and um, it's, it's a lot different feeling when you're off the golf course, when you're hanging out, and it's just um, it's that much more enjoyable, um, I think, and it brings the team together. You want more about the course. Can you compare your feelings when you first went to Sandwich and saw that course, which obviously fitted your eye and you played really well. How do, and when you see here, how do you feel? And comparisons I, or differences? Or? Yeah, I feel comfortable. Um, a lot of the par threes I feel great on. A lot of the iron shots I feel good. Um, so... That's my strength, you know, put it in the fairway, and the rough's not crazy long out here, so, yeah, that might help a couple of guys. Um, but there's still some long grass. Some of these bunkers are really penalizing, and uh, you got to hit good shots. And, and we know birdies are going to win a lot of holes, and, and pars are going to be good in some, in some aspects of uh, the format. So, uh, you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling really good right now. Okay, we're going to wrap it up with Bob, number eight. Colin. Was there a specific instance where you hurt your back in Japan, or was it just sort of cumulative? And also, can you also say when did it feel fine and it was just a matter of bad habits that were in, you know, impacting you? Yeah, uh, it was actually the first round uh, on 14 right before our first delay. So, I mean, it's really early on in the Olympics. And, and that was, I, I think that's you know, what's great about when you play for a team is that it, it just pulled something out of me to just grind it out. Um, for that week 
And then as you know, you go on to Memphis. So that, that, that week was, was when it really happened. Um, and then, you know, I felt fine going right into playoffs. I, I hadn't touched a club cause I had to, you know, make sure my body was all feeling good, but going into playoffs that first week, um, my body felt fine. So that was good. Uh, the swing looked awful and the, the ball flights were going everywhere and it's not, you know, it didn't help that I wasn't making any putts or chipping well. Um, so it was just kind of a combination of everything, you know, bad habits crept in and, um, sometimes it takes a day to get out bad habits. And sometimes, you know, like what happened took three weeks. And it was just, you know, it's such unfortunate timing with the way, you know, I, how I played throughout the regular season. I, I don't even think I played that great. Um, it was kind of a, a mediocre season, even, you know, with the wins I had. I, I think the consistency wasn't there with, with what I wanted and what I probably said after last year's, you know, tour championship on what I wanted to do this season. So um, it, was, it was really bad timing, but I'm, I'm glad I'm healthy now. I'm glad the body and, and the swing is back. Um, cause I can just go out, especially with, with an atmosphere like this, you can just go out and hit your shot. Was it lower back or? Yeah, it was, it was just a muscle. It was, yeah. it was a muscle. Um, so it was just, yeah, I mean, I tried hitting out of this kind of really sticky rough in, in Japan and, um, yeah, I gotta get stronger. <laughs> we are with the U.S. Ryder Cup captain, Steve Stricker. Steve, we're 24 hours out from not only opening ceremonies, but from, from, from for some pairing, excuse me. Um, what's your mindset as the week's gone on? I have to imagine things were kind of, you know, you had things in order, but has anything changed since you've been here as you've seen the guys in the golf course? No, not really. Um, we've stuck to our game plan. Um, guys are having a great time. They're, they're uh, enjoying whistling straights, especially the hospitality here. Um, and back at the American Club, it's uh, it's a great venue for us. Um, yeah, they had a good time with the wind today. They thought it was fun and interesting to play in, in that sort of wind. Um, you know, we're trying to prepare for that as best we could and can, uh, you know, because we don't know what that's going to be like this weekend. And, yeah, so they embraced it and played nine holes, trying to conserve some energy at this point, I think. And uh, But, yeah, our game plan's still firmly in place. All right, let's hit some questions here. We can start with Gary in 21. Hey, Steve, the Cheeseheads this morning. Um, I didn't see it. You didn't see it? No. Okay, all what? the Europeans came out in Cheeseheads. Oh, really? Um, yeah, so I'm just wondering if you think you didn't see it. but I didn't. Um, you know, it's pretty hard for a Wisconsin sports fan to dislike Ian Poulter and Sergio when they were in Cheeseheads. <laughs> I wondered if you, if you think that was a bit of gamesmanship on Padraig's part or just a smart PR move no that's that's smart on their part why why wouldn't you uh when you come over to foreign soil try to win some fans over right um we do the same thing when we go over there um you know and they i'm sure they realize that you know we are on u.s soil and uh the, with the travel restrictions and all that they're they're uh, trying to round up as many fans as they can right and uh, we'd be doing the same thing over there so uh you know, cheese heads are a staple here, right? You know that, Gary. And um, so it's that's that's cool to see. I saw I saw I think Fleetwood on TV wearing a green and gold hat. So I, I thought that they were kind of going down the Packer route as well. So uh, good on them, and um, interesting to see. But we'd be doing the same thing, I think. And um, yeah, trying to get some fans. Doug, twenty six. I'm going to ask something else, but when, when you saw um, Fleetwood, did he not look like Aaron Rodgers to you? Yeah, someone else said that in our team room, too, <laughs> that Aaron Rodgers and Tommy Fleetwood look a lot alike all of a sudden. Um, yeah, they probably both wish they, wish they had each other's game, you know, on the football field, and Aaron, I'm sure, wish had Tommy's game on the course. So, uh, but they do look a lot alike. This is, this is a big hypothetical, I realize, but it's also in, in, in play. If, if somebody were to get... Um, injured uh, or, or, or go down COVID or otherwise before the opening ceremonies and you're allowed a substitute, are any of your assistant captains ready to play? <laughs> I don't know if they brought their clubs. Um, no, and, and knock on wood, you know, we, uh, we talked about, you know, briefly a week or two ago on who we'd bring in, but we really haven't. I mean, we haven't gone down that road anymore. I mean, we're trying to be safe, like I said yesterday, and, um, you know, we all want to play this event. We all, all the guys want to be a part of this team, and 
you know, it's a special event to be a part of, and they work their whole entire careers to be part of something like this. So, uh, you know, we haven't really thought outside that box yet, and hopefully we don't have to. And then, and then one last thing. I saw something on the message board in the press center about it, kind of a message from you and Patrick on, on fan behavior or – and if it crosses the line and yeah. the person faces rejection, uh, where did that come from? And secondly, was it at all mirrored anything that, that Jay had said, Monaghan, uh, a couple weeks ago? Yeah, I think this, these golf organizations are on board with each other, and they work with each other. They're, they're in this together, um, and they're just trying to come up with the right way to handle those types of situations. And... Yeah, I think that's what we're going to see moving forward. You know, what Jay said in his uh, State of the Union address and, you know, the PGA, I know, you know, talk closely with Jay and the PGA Tour, and they're just trying to tackle this uh, potential problem together and, and handle it, you know, equally the same across both both uh, organizations. Thank you. We're going right back here, number 20, Rob. Uh, Steve. Uh, Sorry, where am I? Right here. Oh, Rob. Um, you have a pretty good uh, Ryder Cup history with Ian Poulter. He was in earlier. Um, you know, can you talk about maybe what makes him tick or what made him tick in the, in the encounters that you had with him personally? And if you were a football coach, would, he, would we be asking you how to contain Ian Poulter this week? Yeah, and I, if we knew how, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those questions. He just, we don't know, you know, how to contain him, I guess. You know, we've had a difficult time. I, I played him in a singles match back at Valhalla, I think, and, and lost to him. He's a tough competitor, you know, and this brings out the very best in him. Uh, he, he seems to make some very crucial putts, uh, hit, hit crucial shots when he needs to, and, and just rises to the occasion. occasion. And uh, it seems like he plays better at, at the Ryder Cup than he does at any other PGA Tour event throughout the year, right? So he just elevates his game to another level and um, – yeah, he's kind of the backbone of that team at times. So, yeah, he'd be a good guy that, you know, if we could figure out, and hopefully we can this year, you know, to uh, give him a couple losses for a change, you know. And, and, uh, but it's tough to do. He's, he's, uh, he's uh, like I said, very tough. Over here on your left, Steve. Uh, Jeff, number 19. Steve, you, you watched Patrick and Xander play together in Australia. They've been together a couple sessions here. In the off chance they were to be paired, uh, what do you like about that? tandem first of all they're just they're good friends you know they um, they get along very well with each other they've played some you know cup golf together in the president's cup uh, they just enjoy being around each other and that's half the battle when you try to pair guys up and um, they each you know each of their games complements the other one and that's another thing when you you put guys together uh, especially in foursomes that you want you want their games to complement each other's and, and theirs do. And have you learned a lot about Patrick in his last year or so run up to this event? Uh, yeah. He's, he's tough. Yeah. He's, uh, he's Patty Ice. That's what he is, right? And he, uh, he, plays, he plays great. He's got a, a calm demeanor about him, uh, a killer, killer mentality, you know. I mean, when he gets somebody down, uh, he really – wants to keep him down, it seems like. And uh, we're getting to know him a lot more. You know, I, I got to know him last year or two years ago in the President's Cup, um, or I guess it was last year. And um, getting to know him a little bit more this year. So, yeah, just a uh, good guy to be around and, and a heck of a player. Okay, over on your right, Rex, three. Patrick has made the same bet that Thomas did before him that he'll get a tattoo if Europe wins. Would you get a tattoo if the U.S. wins? What's my tattoo got to be? Whatever you want it to be. Oh, really? Well, we yeah. Thomas we've was the score, so I would assume that's where you would go. Well, yeah, we've discussed tattoos in our room. Um, the problem is, though, my girls, my wife and kids have always asked me to get a tattoo, and I'm like, I'm not putting any decals on my body, you know, kind of thing. And uh, so, yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to check with them first, I think, to see if I could actually get a tattoo, you know, from the Ryder Cup. I had an idea. The, the players gave me an idea that uh, where I, what I could put on there. I told them where I was going to put it. It was going to go right on my cheek. And uh, <laughs> so, 
We'll see what uh, what brings uh, about that. We may have a tattoo artist guy come in on Sunday night. I don't know, you know, one way or the other, it may happen. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Mark, uh, that's six. Go ahead. Hey, Steve. Um, hey. Can you, I mean, you're so associated with, with this state, and, and uh, I'm just kind of curious if you can express what your anticipation for this week has been, dating back to the moment you knew that you were going to be the captain. Yeah, first of all, it's just a, uh, a relief that it's here. You know, I mean, for a while it was a question whether we were going to be able to play it, whether we were going to play it at all, whether we were going to play it with fans. I mean, I was on calls, I don't know how many times I've said this this week, but throughout the last couple of years, you know, um, dealing with all of that above what I just said, you know, and and uh, thankfully we're going to play it with fans. You know, I I my thing from the get-go was like what a crime it would be to play this unbelievable event without fans, uh, especially here in Wisconsin that's never, you know, had the opportunity to experience this, this Ryder Cup. So, um, first of all, we're, you know, it's just a relief, I guess, that we're here and, and finally that it is here, you know. I mean, three years has been a long time, but yet all of a sudden it seems like it went by really quick. Uh, you know, I'm sure we all, as we get older, you know, it all seems to happen that way for some reason. But, um, yeah, just grateful that it's here, grateful for the opportunity to be doing it. And, and finally, you know, I wish Friday morning was tomorrow morning already. So, But, again, I don't want to wish it to go by super fast so you don't get to enjoy it. So we're trying to take it all in as a team and enjoy each other and enjoy the relationships. And we're having fun with it. Guys have been unbelievable. Uh, they've come together so well in, in the last couple of weeks. So extremely excited and uh, to finally get out there and watch him play. Right next door, number five. Hey Steve, your keyword seems to have been preparation. We hear that word a lot from you. And I was curious, does that extend to your players? And what <laughs> I mean by that is, do they know who they're going to play with already? Um, and if the answer is yes, I'm curious how early uh, they knew that. Yeah, yeah, we have, um, we have that down. I mean, we, we went over this Monday. Um, uh, I wanted the guys to know what the plan was for Friday on Monday so we can prepare that way. Um, and I think that's something that in previous teams that I've learned, uh, you know, the communication part, getting guys to understand their position and their roles. So we've taken a lot of time and energy in trying to talk to these guys and define both their roles and and tell them what um, we expect from them and what they expect from us kind of thing. So um, that's been a huge part of what's been going on. And, and uh, yeah, we, we, we went over that on Monday, and we're working towards Fridays already. Same neighborhood, seven. Uh, Thank you. A, a year ago this, t this time, obviously, you know Jordan's positioning right in the world rankings and all this stuff and he says, said himself he didn't think that he was in the picture you know to be on this team a year ago and I wonder from your perspective at that time you know how you were looking at him and what you were thinking about the possibility <clears throat> of having to you know say make captain's picks and leave off a yeah. guy like Jordan Speed. well and, and I've talked to him and he's talked to me about it that you know if it wasn't for this extra year I don't know if Jordan would have been on the team uh, but first of all uh, when I look at Jordan, I look at him as a, f a friend. You know, I, I played golf with him. I was a teammate of his uh, years ago uh, back in a President's Cup at, at Mirfield Village. Um, you know, we're friends. Um, you know, I wish him the best. And I'm always looking at where's Jordan, how's he playing, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm always rooting for him. And so it was good to see that he, you know, turned his game around this year and got in a position to, to make the team because, you know, Jordan's an important part of a team. You know, he brings a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm uh, to a team, and he's great in the team room, and it's, it's a guy that you want in there, and, and we're fortunate to have him in there. From your perspective, just the, the kind of resiliency it takes to go kind of from that far down to, to, to this yeah. high up in that short of a period, can you put that in perspective? Yeah, I mean, it's that's golf, right? We all experience, I've experienced it, um, and you can go either two ways. You can kind of give up and go home, or you can just work a little bit harder and, and um, try to bust through it and get through it and get better, and, and sometimes you come out of those slumps even better uh, than you went, you know, uh, than you were before. So you learn a lot from those poor times, and uh, I'm sure Jordan 
you know, learned a lot about himself and his game, his family, uh, friends, all that kind of stuff you learn about. So he, uh, he's going to come out of it strong. He's got a tremendous amount of talent. And uh, so I just look forward to seeing him just to keep improving, really. I mean, his confidence level is, is back, and he just continues to get better and better all the time. Okay, we have time for about three more. We're going to start here at 24, right back here. My question was asked, so go ahead. Oh, it was just asked, all right. Doug, 26. Good. Steve, I had a couple of questions about the envelope. Um, in, in your three Ryder Cups that you played, did you ever volunteer your name for it? That's question one. I did not, no. Okay. And so I never knew who was in the envelope in all the times that I've played on uh, the Ryder Cup. I never knew who the person was in there. I'm not, I'm not sure it does. There's a high level of secrecy, obviously. So when you have to make those decisions for, for either envelope, I guess, in this case, uh, how do you go about the process and who's going to know who's in the envelope? Yeah, I don't know if I'll uh, – I've never experienced the, uh, the envelope. You know, I've never been a part of it, really. I, I think it, the teams that I've been a, uh, an assistant captain on for these Ryder Cups, I don't ever remember – I don't remember a lot sometimes, but I, uh, I don't remember being a part of that, um, you know, who goes in the envelope. Um, I'll probably ask my assistants, you know, I mean, you want to make sure you put the right guy in there, even though it, it's there is no right guy, it seems like, right? It doesn't seem like a very good place to be in that envelope. But, um, yeah, you want to make sure that, and no, now this year we got more, right? We got to put actually two envelopes of three guys, a total of three guys. So, yeah, I don't know. I, it's not a great, not a great thing to do. So would you talk to your assistants, but yeah. you, can you get a sense that you would be the only one who actually knows? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I probably will talk to my assist assistants and then probably not even tell them who I put in there. Because, I, again, you don't want to have anybody know that they went in the envelope. At least I wouldn't want to know if I was in there, and I probably was in there at some point. I probably should have been in there in 2012. So, <laughs> Or Tiger and I both should have been in there the way we played. But, uh, anyways, it was – We'll, we'll take it from there. Thanks. All right, we're going to beam out, Captain, to Steve Demiglio. Steve, go ahead. You're with the captain. Strix, um, have you learned anything about your team, whether on the golf course or in the team room, or anything about the course that you didn't know about on Monday? Um, you know, the wind for the golf course, the wind has, has proved to be a challenge because we're going to see a completely opposite wind come the tournament uh, we've been playing with a northerly wind um, you know and then it's going to switch out of the south and go to the west so we're going to see something totally different come Friday um, you know I, I guess and I don't you know I don't mean this uh, I don't mean to keep blowing smoke up my team's cheeks you know like we talked about earlier but I think I I just I'm uh, I knew they were close but they're close they're really close they're I think they've played so much golf together uh, growing up on the same college teams together. Um, they play a lot of social golf together. I mean, this team is really close. So that that's, hasn't surprised me to some degree, but the level of how close they are has surprised me, I guess. And, you know, uh, that's a good thing. You know, that's what I wanted from day one is, is a, uh, a family-type, atmosphere and and everybody to get along and hopefully that leads to good play thanks steve all, all right. right we're going to wrap her up here uh number eight uh that's adam steve you mentioned the friendship of patrick and xander and it's pretty similar with justin and jordan i'm just curious do the stats back up that they're really good pairings and in general how much are you relying on stats this week um yeah the stats do back it up for sure um, as far as how much I'm relying on it. Um, I rely a, a lot on it, you know, leading up to the picks. I wanted to make sure that the guys I was thinking about for the picks um, and what kind of picks would go well with the current six guys that had already made the team. So we were looking at pairings uh, quite a bit. So I, I used a, quite a bit of stats for that and just and then some of my gut feeling on that as well. What personalities you know mesh well with each other 
Uh, as we go forward, it's kind of less and less stats all the time. Um, you know, watching these guys play, you know, get an understanding of how well they're playing here right now. Uh, stats and, and playing here are, you know, could be two different things. So um, trying to get a feel for those guys, how they're getting along with their potential partners, how they're playing right here. Uh, that's kind of now what we're doing. Uh, a little bit of stats, that's kind of gone away, and now just kind of watching golf and going with our guts and what we're seeing out here and, and what we've seen, you know, in previous years with these guys. All right, Captain. Thanks so much for being Thanks, with guys. us, Thank and you. we'll see you see tomorrow. You.